The 7700K has already been pitted against its Skylake predecessor in terms of gaming at least. That video showed that there are no reasonable IPC improvements to the KB Lake architecture, which means that clock for clock, each chip is going to perform about the same. Keeping that in mind with regards to today's video, I'm going to be testing out how the 6700K and 7700K compare when it comes to video editing. I'm going to be checking everything out in Premiere Pro, but rather instead of putting them at 4.5 gigahertz versus 4.5 gigahertz, I'm going to put them at what I've been running them on a daily basis. So for the 6700K, it's gonna be running at 4.6 gigahertz, whereas the 7700K is going to be running at five gigahertz. So with that said, do you wanna turn on the system? Okay, I need you to, okay, there's a red button right over there. Can you do that? You put it on, you got it? Good job. Let's just go into the BIOS first to make sure everything is set up correctly. All right, we have a 4.6 gigahertz overclock with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RipJaws 4 memory running at 2400 megahertz. So the program we're gonna be using today is Adobe Premiere Pro CC, the 2017 edition. I'm gonna run two tests. So this timeline is a very simple one. All it contains is 4K footage for my GH4 at 100 megabits per second, as well as the screen capture, which is 1080p, 30 FPS. So just has that, my audio recordings, as well as some music in. It's a very basic edit, uh, but it is quite long, coming in at roughly 19 minutes. I'm going to be exporting it in my normal uh, H.264 4K YouTube settings, which is uh, 40 megabit per second VBR1 pass through for the bitrate encoding. And I just need to make sure it's going to the correct place. So we'll have it exporting there. I'm also gonna pull up Task Manager and MSI Afterburner to just monitor everything as it happens. So we're gonna start the timer as soon as I hit export. So you can see it's roughly about a just over four to 4.25 gigabyte file. Uh, so let's see how long this one takes. And go. Now it's time for us to wait. All right, we can, we can go do something else while we wait, okay? Okay. Right. I read that my three books. What? And I read my three books. You're gonna read your three books? Done. So that comes in at 20. That's not very long. Okay, that one was done. Now it is, I'm going to go ahead and open the video that I released last night and export. I need to get rid of those. Those aren't part of the actual thing. I need, I'm gonna go ahead and export this one because it includes my 4K GH4 footage, but then it also, um, it has some effects applied to it like warp stabilization in my B-roll shots as well as some like act after effects editing, um, not that, like with the, with the text. So it, it contains a bit more, uh, more intensive exporting stuff, such as the warp stabilization and the after effects uh, dynamic link. So let's go ahead and export that with the same settings. Everything's the same, 40 megabit per second bit rate as with VBR one pass. Um, it's coming in at just like one and a half gigabytes. Uh, but with the extra stuff, it shouldn't just uh, take as long as a normal one gigabyte file. Now it is time to begin the second export. Yes. Oh, I missed. Dang. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, no, cancel. Dang it. Oh, I can hit enter. Okay, you want to hit enter? Okay, I'll tell you when to press it. All right, three, two, one, press. That finishes at, okay, so those are both done. Um, have both of those times recorded just to see the, uh, what the 6700K standard is. Now comes the arduous task of setting up the new system. Um, it's the same Maximus 9 motherboard from ASUS with the,
Power's on, motherboard is flashing them colors, and start. So the only things that are actually changing here are the motherboard and the CPU. The RAM is the same 32 gigs of G-Skill Rip Jaws 4 at 2400 megahertz, same cast latency, keeping the Zotac GTX 1080 amp, as well as the same uh, M.2 950 Pro uh, 512 gigs storage drive, which is what everything's going on. Um, just gonna set the overclock quickly. I'm gonna put it at five gigahertz, which is what I have typically been running the system on. 2400 megahertz for the RAM. And then I just need to set the RAM voltage to 1.35 volts. All right, so we should be at five gigahertz, 2400 megahertz RAM on the 32 gigs. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and render out the same projects. Just to make sure that 4.96 gigahertz, everything's running fine. Okay, so it's the same idea. Uh, going to be exporting on the same settings as the 6700K, keeping basically everything the same besides the chips. All right, all of the export settings are the same, same. 4.5 gigabyte file and it is going to be time to render. Everything's running at five gigahertz. It's good to go. I'm just gonna set it and leave it for now and see how everything turns out. Done. Now that the first one's done, at it is time to open up the RX 480 video. And three, two, one. Let's see what you can do, guy. So the second test is done at 10. Okay, conclusion time. Looking at all of the calculator numbers that are on this screen right here, we can take a look at the performance differences between the two chips. For Skylake, on the first rendering test, on the first export test, we have 27.30 minutes for the total export. For KB Lake, on the other hand, it came in at 29.33 total minutes, making it a two full minutes slower or as the number would indicate down there, 7% slower than Skylake. And for the second export, the Skylake system came in at 10.272 minutes, whereas the KB Lake system came in at 10.59 minutes, making it a difference of 3%, meaning that in both rendering and export tests, the KB Lake system comes in slower than the Skylake system. And before I even film this conclusion, I decided to go ahead and check online to make sure that my numbers were in line. And for 4K video exporting, KB Lake on the whole is indeed slower than Skylake. 1080p exporting, on the other hand, does give KB Lake the upper hand by roughly seven or so percent. So the losses that I'm experiencing here at 4K exporting will be regained and then put into the KB Lake win for 1080p export. So it looks like for my particular workflow where I'm editing 4K footage off my GH4 as well as some other 1080p footage with After Effects mixed in and then exporting to 4K to upload to YouTube, it looks like sticking with my 6700K is going to be a better bet, even though it's 400 megahertz slower in this instance. However, if your workflow has you exporting the 1080p based on the other research that I've done online, it may be worthwhile for you to pick up the 7700K. But with that said, the story of KB Lake is isn't just with the speed or the export times. It also has to do with the chipset availability of the Z270 board, as well as some features of Z270 that are going to be exclusive to KB Lake, such as with Intel Optane's memory, which we don't particularly have a chance to test out yet to see if that's going to make a difference as far as fetching times with hard drives go. The upgrade that I can recommend at this point after testing both gaming and my Premiere Pro workflow with the KB Lake system is 
it's it's just not worth it if you already have a Skylake system. However, the Z270 does bring advantages such as multiple NVMe drives, which could tremendously help you out when it comes to a professional application workflow such as. So that's where I'm going to end this video today. Uh, I think that's pretty much all of the in-depth look that I'm going to be taking at the particular 7700K chip, but I will have more videos coming out on motherboards, Z270 and the like, and other features that I can potentially test. If you do have recommendations for other things that you want me to check out with the KB Lake chip, be sure to let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my best to look into them. And I want to thank both ASUS South Africa for sending over the Maximus 9 formula and the 7700K for me to check out, as well as Wootware for sending over the Zotac GTX 1080 amp as the Fantex cooler and basically everything that's on the test bed right now. If you're in South Africa, Wootware should be your go-to place for your KB Lake upgrades, Skylake upgrade, GTX 1080s, RX 480s, and the like. They have fantastic prices on their entire selection and a tremendous customer support staff that's always willing to help. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootware.co.za to begin wooting up your system. All right, guys, that's going to be it. Like this video if you found it helpful at all. Dislike it if you thought it stunk. Be sure to subscribe if you're new around here to stay up to date on all of my tech-related content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. And also, please help me get to 10,000 subs so I can shave this freaking thing off. I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate my facial hair and this mess. I just want to shave already. Get me to 10,000 subs, please. <laughs>